I study Alzheimer's disease to not only figure out who eventually is going to get Alzheimer's disease, but hopefully, eventually, how they're going to develop Alzheimer's disease and how we can better treat them. The human brain is one of the most complex biological systems in the world. If we want to address psychiatric diseases like Alzheimer's, we first need to understand how the system works. We are here at the University of Miami to talk to Dr. Amanda Myers, who is using multi-omics to unravel these complex systems. What made you study Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease is one of the few uh, neurological diseases where you have this known, defined pathology. So when people look inside of the brain, there are, and this has been known for a hundred years, there are things called plaques and tangles. We don't really know what plaques and tangles do, but it's thought that you could have different staging of plaques, and that helps you define the stage of Alzheimer's disease. The most common form of Alzheimer's disease affects you really late in life. So think about it, you have to be healthy and able to tolerate all these different changes that are going on in this really complex system for a really long time. So it's gonna be little tiny things. And as a scientist, it's really hard to study those little tiny things. The first thing that I need to do is get my DNA. Now to simplify the problem, I just wanna look at DNA variation. What I can do is simply look at a single DNA change. And so what we're really mapping is a linear relationship between variation dosage and expression. So we do the same mapping with the Alzheimer's data, but we're looking for those linear relationships to be slightly changed. So we can do this over and over and over again. And so at the end of the day, we get these big networks of data where it's DNA controlling downstream expression of RNA and protein. What's really important for Alzheimer's disease? Well, you can use other types of math to go into those networks and pull out small subnetworks that you think are really important. And then you look at those subnetworks and you pull out what molecule is really important. So from all of this huge pile of data, you get single things that are called key drivers that are the most crucial for the development of disease. So basically, instead of just studying the association between genetic variants and disease, you study the association between genetic variants to gene expression and protein expression. Exactly, exactly. How big a role does the DNA play? Is, is it a completely heritable disease? So it's not a completely heritable disease, but it is one of the most heritable diseases. So if you have a relative with Alzheimer's disease, you've got between 60 to 70% increased risk for having disease. So how can uh, so many different things lead to the same phenotype? It might be that those, those are sort of end stages in the disease. There are some people that have this plaque and tangle pathology that are perfectly happy. They don't have cognitive declines. We really have to disentangle all of the information possible to know how everything is interacting on those two proteins. Are there regions of the brain that's particularly susceptible? Yes, this is a real human brain that's been fixed. This is front, this is back. You've got a little strip down there that's got your motor cortex, which is, allows you to control everything. And then you've also got a strip right in front of that that's your somatosensory cortex. But what's really important for memory, the first thing that goes in Alzheimer's disease is a little bit that's right behind your ear, which is right there and it's inside, it's sort of curled up on itself and it's called the hippocampus. So how do you study this complex system? Well, I always start at the DNA. And I look at all the different changes in the DNA and how those are doing downstream. The 
computation and the technology allows you to get everything. As you can imagine, there's a lot of noise, and so you've got to really get a lot of samples. But what we take is a little tiny bit of the brain, and we break that up, and we put that with different kinds of buffers, and we spin it down, and you can get DNA or RNA or protein. When I do my Alzheimer's studies and get my Alzheimer's targets, I double back and make sure that the math is correct by looking at whether my targets affect those pathological proteins. So specifically, because we've met targets in brain tissue, we want to use cells that are going to become neurons. We expose some of the cells to the target and others we leave unexposed. And then we follow up the growth and the development of these cells as they become neurons. And we map changes. We look at whether they die, how they look, and all sorts of other cell health phenotypes to really say not only that this target is having an effect, but how specifically it changes a neuron. Now this allows for us to have a simple cell culture system which we can use for drug screening. It needs to be simple, but we also need to know what our target is doing to those cells. And by having this cell culture system, we have both of those outcomes. What inspires you about this work? What inspires me about the work is a rare possibility that we will be able to develop treatments or cures for this devastating illness. It's an illness that affects both patients and their families, and it's about time we do something to help these people. Where do you see the future? I see the future based on my science as two possibilities. So I could use DNA to screen people and to prevent the disease, but I can also use drugs developed against my downstream targets to help people that already have the illness.